1941, a huge construction would be completed, one that would be the setting for an attempt on the life of Germany's leader. In today's video, we look at the construction and defences of the Wolf's Lair, Hitler's military headquarters during World War II. Throughout his time in power, Hitler had a fascination with creating bigger and better weapons of war. Following the successful invasion of Poland in 1939, German forces pushed westward and captured every country in their path. Sentiment amongst Hitler and the senior figures of the Third Reich was growing, as it became more obvious that a strategic attack on the Soviet Union was on the cards. Because of this, there was a need for a strategically placed military installation, where Hitler and those under him could make decisions and plan the next moves. The Tot organisation, headed by senior Nazi figure Fritz Tot, was put in charge of the construction for this installation. Its name would become Wolfschatze. Wolf was a self-adopted nickname of Hitler, and the German word Schatze is a term from military engineering translating to fortifications. However, the usual English translation for the location is Wolf's Lair. The location for the construction of the facility was chosen carefully. It was situated about 8 kilometres or 5 miles from the nearest town, in a dense forest. Its size is said to be around 6.5 square kilometres, or 2.5 square miles. The Wolf's Lair defences were separated into three specific security zones. Security Zone 3 was the outermost zone. It was surrounded by both anti-personnel and anti-tank minefields. Hundreds of specially trained Wehrmacht soldiers occupied checkpoints, guardhouses, pillboxes, trenches and watchtowers. These troops were backed up with armoured vehicles, tanks, anti-aircraft guns, and heavy weaponry. Any approaching aircraft could be observed from up to 100 kilometres or 62 miles away. Further troops and an additional headquarters were situated not far from the facility to provide reinforcements where needed. A nearby airfield and rail facility provided supplies and brought guests and high-ranking officers for meetings. Security Zone 2 was located within the ring of Zone 3. This had housing for ministers, such as Albert Speer and Joachim von Rubentrop. It also had quarters for personnel who worked within the Wolf's Lair. Security Zone 1 was in the centre of the two previous zones. It was surrounded by steel fencing and guarded by specially trained SS troops. The facilities inside this area were especially secure, as it contained the Führer's Bunker and ten other bunkers. These were assigned to high-ranking members of the Nazi Party, such as Martin Bormann, Hermann Goering and Wilhelm Keitel. Each of these had two-metre or six-foot thick concrete walls, reinforced with steel. They were camouflaged with artificial trees, bushes and grass along their roofs, with camouflage netting attached between the buildings themselves. This meant that from the air, the facility disappeared into the forest. Indeed, Wolf's Lair was a formidable location for any possible attack, and throughout the war, no foreign aggressor was able to make it into the facility while it was fully manned. However, it would be the scene of an attempt on Hitler's life. In July 1944, Colonel Klaus von Stauffenberg would carry a briefcase containing a time-delayed bomb into a meeting with Hitler and various other officers. Due to several factors, the bomb would explode but fail to kill Hitler. Ultimately, von Stauffenberg and his co-conspirators would be arrested and executed. Wolf's lair was used extensively by Hitler. Once the Eastern Front opened up, it was an ideal location to provide orders for the troops on the ground. He would spend over 800 days at the facility, between 1941 and 1944, 
when he and all the occupants were forced to withdraw due to the advancing Russian army. In January 1945, the Russians would capture the facility and set to work demolishing the buildings. Due to the immense size and amount of reinforced concrete used, most of the buildings were not fully destroyed. It would also take at least another 10 years for the estimated 50,000 plus mines to be cleared from around the facility. What are your thoughts on the defences for Hitler's wolf's lair? Do you think they were a waste of resources and a bit of overkill? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section down below. As always guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to expand your knowledge and join the growing Premier History community.